What's up guys? Hope you're doing well. I want to share Hudson's naming story since uh, I just shared Beckham's naming story. And Hudson, he was born in June of 2021, which means he was conceived sometime around September of 2020. And I don't know if y'all remember 2020. Hopefully, by the grace of God, you've been able to black it out from your memory. But, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and remind you real quick that it was some interesting days. It was some interesting days. And as it related to having Hudson, it felt like a brave time to have a kid and a brave time for this child to come into the world. A, a, a precarious world that we're birthing children into. And specifically in September, you know, if, if the man who shall not be named, Mr. T, had been elected, like, I really just don't know what would have happened. And I think there would have been some, you know, we, we already saw some riots about various things throughout that year and tensions rising and frustrations. And if Mr. T had been elected, I was like, really, I just wouldn't be surprised if. If, if there are like some legit kind of like anarchy, you know, masses versus institutions type of, you know, violent behavior going on, I just really wouldn't have been surprised. You would have assumed that surely, hopefully it could die off, whatever, but I just didn't know what was going to happen. And the point of that is... You read Matthew 24, 25, and you start thinking about the end times and Jesus' return. You know, Jesus was kind enough to give a little shout out to, to moms who were pregnant or nursing. The shout out sounded something like, woe to them. <laughs> like, it's going to be tough if you're in that life stage when these things start to go down. And so, again, it felt brave for us. Not that we were like, oh, Jesus is coming back this year, but, you know, we're getting closer every year. And certainly, there was just a lot of unknown about what the state of America was going to be like and how, how safe would we even really feel and how norm, what would life even be like, you know? And simultaneously, our culture... It, especially then, but even still, just, you know, becoming more and more divided and more and more hostile and more and more confused. You know, there's fewer and fewer things that people would say is truth or is absolutely a fact. And yet, simultaneously, um, like, less and less tolerance for people that don't think the same way as you. It's quite the dichotomy to live in. And so, anyways, we were just thinking about bravery with choosing a name for Hudson. And we had searched all around, like, is there any name that means brave? Or even searching other languages, like anything that means brave or, or strong or courageous or, you know, just something like that. Because we felt like our child was going to be marked by that. And... We simultaneously, we both really liked the name Hudson, but we looked it up and it meant son of HUD. We were like, oh man, that's not it. That is not it. <laughs> so we just kept looking around, but weren't getting anywhere. And as we were getting closer to the due date, we we're like, we really got to figure this out. I just had this thought, probably from a ward, like, you know what? Let me look up what HUD means real quick. And I look it up, and it means 
brave ruler. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. One sec. Hey. How's it going? Good. It's going in personal. Okay. Brave ruler. So Hudson really means son of a brave ruler. And the brave ruler is really like God. You know, he's he's uh, <laughs> he's the he's the bravest and the ruliest one of them all. It's not really like he's my son. It's like, man, we want him to be a child of God, a son of God, adopted into the family of God. And so it was like, oh my gosh, it's Hudson. No doubt about it. And I shared in my last video about Beckham some of the just other things that we were thinking about as it related to naming a kid. And then we got to the middle name and there were some, some family names on the male side that were in the mix. You know, on Megan's side, it's like we could go Gary, we could go Stuart, we could go Mark, um, could even go Alex. But ultimately, none of them got that much traction mainly not because we didn't like those people or the idea of carrying a name, a male name from Megan's side. But I think just neither of us loved the names themselves, just the way they sounded or whatever, just didn't fit. And then on my side, um, Jackson is a big family name for sure. That got a lot of consideration. Thank you. Have a good Me too. And ultimately, I felt like you know my my older brother carries the middle name Jackson, and who knows if he will procreate or not in this life. But it just seemed a little weird for us to name. I mean, it's really probably not that weird. You could have cousins with the same middle name or whatever, but. I was like, I don't want to name a kid like stealing the name that my older brother has kind of first dibs on passing down. I don't know. I just didn't want to do it. And then you got Lewis. Okay, of course, you have my brother's names and you get some other names if you go further back, but... Um, None of them were like the name for Hudson. And so then it's like, what else is it gonna be? And we actually landed with Daniel, surprisingly, because I had mentioned in my last video that I didn't particularly want a biblical name to be, um, to be something we name our kids. But mainly because most biblical characters have you know, some type of huge character misstep or some major sin. And I just didn't want our kids to be defined by that or confused by that or look, you're a role model, <laughs> you know. But Daniel is one of the very, very few characters that has no, like, mention of anything poor that he did. Like, there, like he was a picture of Christ. He wasn't the Christ, you know. But he's admirable in everything that he did. And he also, you know, the book of Daniel is significant in terms of end times uh, theology, I guess you could say. And that's just something that we were thinking about a lot during 2020 and, and since then and before then just, you know, awaiting and believing for the return of Jesus to earth as Jesus promised he would do. And we wanted, you know, Hudson to be, to be marked by that, that his, his bravery that he's marked by is not just his own courage, but it's a bravery that's tied to Jesus. It's it's tied to who God is and what he's promised and knowing that God will be faithful to what he said and and ultimately just you know one that will make it to the end and and not 
waver in who he is and his faith and everything. Um, particularly as our culture gets more and more confused or more and more divided or more and more just um, away from biblical values and biblical teaching. You know, we just want to to mark our son Hudson with he won't be. You know, he'll be a light even in that environment. And Daniel, you know, he served under Nebuchadnezzar and Darius and, and Cy, Cyrus and you know, several he's he served a lot of people that did not love God and worked with a lot of people that did not love God, that did not espouse the Christian faith or the Jewish faith back then. Like he but he didn't waver. Um, even being thrown into the den of lions and then God shut the lion's mouths like a baller and so just putting your faith in the Lord even as culture um, maybe turns away and it's not just like Daniel was the last one standing and he's just holding on for dear hope and he hopes to make it it's like he actually led a lot of people to believe in God to praise God to acknowledge the legitimacy of his God, the Christian God um, by several different things that he demonstrated or several different moments where God just supernaturally showed favor on him um, and you can you can go read the book of Daniel if you want to, it's an amazing book some crazy things crazy crazy things and so Again, as it relates to Hudson and his bravery, it's a bravery that's connected to the Lord, but it's also one that is um, uh, like contagious. Like Daniel's faith was multiplied out beyond him, and because he was courageous, because he was brave, um, like many people came to see God for who He was. Anyways, that's a little bit about Hudson Daniel BR, and ultimately, it's cool, again, to see your son grow up, and he's going to turn two this June, so we don't know quite as much about his personality as we do Beckham's. I have lived twice as much life with Beckham as I have with Hudson so far. You know, that will not be true after a couple more months. <laughs> Hudson's going to... Uh, you know, it, it'll, it'll merge together more and more. But from what we know of him so far, I mean, he's so, um, he's so bold in so many ways. He's so willing. Uh, he's, he, I'm not sure if I would say he's an extrovert. It's a little bit too hard to tell, but he's certainly more extroverted than Beckham is. And just quick to initiate. He's also uh, much more expressive, uh, much more uh, persistent. I wouldn't say that he's rebellious by any means, but you know he'll he'll show you his emotions, whether it's anger or laughter or whatever. He'll just show them bigger and bolder um, than what we experience with Beckham. And it's not like you know Hudson's not defined by Beckham, but it's a, a frame of reference for us to see, like, man, is he going to be marked with this, you know, this bravery and this rulership that's connected to God? And ultimately, I totally believe that he will be, and that he is, and I see it in so many ways, and so it's just cool to see God work in your kids' lives, and just special to have that that role, that responsibility of naming a human being. Like, can you imagine? If you haven't done that before, like, can you imagine that? <laughs> like, whoa. It's not like that's all she wrote and there's no other opportunity for them to experience, you know, pillar aspects of identity. But, but it's a big one, the name that you're given. So... So we're thankful. I'm trying to think if there's really anything else to uh, to 
to add as far as that goes, but um, yeah, maybe there's not. That's a Daniel BR. So glad you're my son, man. So thankful for you. I do feel like, to put it very, very simply, I feel like, well, I feel like I've been given two gifts in particular and probably several others, but one of them is related to stewardship, finances, generosity. And I really feel like God is like giving that to Beckham. And another one is leadership. And I really feel like God is giving that to Hudson. And we'll see. There's going to be overlap for sure. They're both going to be gifted in both. And they're also will be gifted in other things. You know, my box for their life is not important, <laughs> you know. Um, but, but as it relates to their names and what we've seen of them. And, and I just had that sense for them for a long time. And, and so it's not like we won't pass down any money to Hudson and that we won't teach Beckham how to lead or anything like that. But, you know, it's like we all have, we all have all these abilities in all these areas, but some of us have pronounced abilities in particular areas. And so we're just excited to see how that um, plays out. And it's cool to see the Lord, um, take things that are in you, values, experiences, and use them to shape the next generation. And I'm just so excited uh, to see how he does that with, with Hudson and with Beckham as well. So it's been an honor getting to name them and even bigger honor getting to raise them. Such a, such a treat. That's all I got for y'all today. I'm gonna go hang out with some pals. I'll talk to y'all soon. Life is worship. God is love. <laughs>